good day viewers we thank god again for the privilege we have to be in the land of the living it's exciting to be alive i welcome you to this time of bible study a precious time we have to learn at the feet of jesus we are continuing our discussion today on the sub team godly leadership and we'll be looking at the characteristics of godly leadership as our topic giving care and mentoring that's looking at giving care and mentoring as part of the salient characteristics of a godly leader and i'm excited because with us in the studio today to discuss this are our fathers and the lord our resource persons by my right is reverend obum nade he is the vicar saint andrew's anglican church gishiri here in abuja diocese you're welcome to the program sir god bless you and by my left is Reverend Chidozie Ezike. He is the vicar, St. Peter's Anglican Church, Guzape, Paradise Hill, also here in Abuja Diocese. You are welcome to the program, sir. God bless you. Thank you very much. Quickly, we will go through the aims of our study today and then we'll read the background text and pick it up from there. Our aims today will be to understand what giving care and mentoring mean. Secondly, find out how to become caregivers and mentors as leaders. Thirdly, we want to gain an insight into what caregiving and mentoring entail, particularly in the church. What does it mean for the church? And then finally, we want to identify some concrete steps that can be taken to remedy poor caregiving and mentoring in the church, and I dare add, in the society at large today. Quickly, let's look at our background text. Reverend Obum, please can you help us read Nehemiah chapter 13, verses 10 to 12. And then Reverend Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter 34, 1 to 6. Nehemiah chapter 13, verse 10. And I perceived that the portions of the Levites had not been given them. For the Levites and the singers, that did the work, we have fled everyone to his field. Then contended I with the rulers and said, Why is the house of God forsaken? And I gathered them together and set them in their place. Then brought all Judah the tithes of the corn and the new wine and the oil onto the treasuries. This is the word of God. Thanks Ezekiel. be to God. Ezekiel 34, sir. Ezekiel 34, verse 1 to 6. The word of the Lord came to me, son of man, prophesy against shepherd of Israel. Prophesy and say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Woe to the shepherds of Israel. Who only take care of themselves? Should not shepherds take care of the flock? You eat the cuts, clothe yourself with the wool, and slaughter the choice animals, but you do not take care of the flock. You have not strengthened the weak, mm. or healed the sick, mm. or bound up the injured. You have not brought back the stray, or searched for the lost. You have ruled them harshly and brutally. So they were scattered because there was no shepherd. Mm. And when they were scattered, they became food for all the wild animals. My sheep wandered over all the mountain, and on every high hill they were scattered over the whole earth, and no one searched or looked for them. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Introduction. Godly leadership is also characterized by giving care and mentoring. That is, they are duties every godly leadership should perform, and that with significant results. Members need different types of care and to varying degrees, emotional, physical, financial, spiritual, legal, social, etc. God frowned at leaders in Ezekiel 34, 1-6 when they failed to give the care needed by their sheep. 
Mentoring is the arrangement by which a wise and trusted counselor or teacher provides experience and instruction to someone to help him or her grow and develop fully and properly. I think the introduction is quite self-explanatory. In the context of our discussion today, we'll be looking at that critical role that we should play as leaders in the church, as pastors, or even as lay leaders in God's church. You know, in Ezekiel 34, we are Reverend just read, God reprimanded the leaders in Ezekiel's time because it was as if it was all about them, no longer about the flocks. But the essence of leadership is for the people. It should be people-centered. It shouldn't be self-centered. It should be other-centric, if I'll use that word, instead of being centered around the person. And then we look at mentoring. I think in biblical language, we can liken that to discipleship. Uh, yeah, how, you, how we can bring off people so that, I love the last line, it says, so that they can develop fully and properly. You know, that's answering the call, the altar call, is just a first step. You are initiated. For you to be grounded in the Lord, there's a place for discipleship, there's a place for mentoring, for you to grow. Moses mentored Joshua. We look at all those as we discuss. Yes, actually, the right was supposed to be discipleship. Because mm. God asks us to make disciples of, of all nations. nations. So the mentoring is, uh, is not more Maybe an, Ingl an, an, an English, uh, an English word. You can mentor somebody from afar. But you cannot do discipleship from afar. From afar. They need contacts. God will help us as we discuss all those in a, in a moment, trusting that the Holy Spirit will speak to us and speak through us as well today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Reverend sir, let's look at question number one. You will help us address question one and question one B. First, how will you define giving care and mentoring? Reverend Ezeke just called it discipleship. Question B now said, list and discuss specific ways care can be given to members in our church. Let's take the A part of it first and then we'll move to the B. Thank you. Number one, care, giving care. Giving care simply means providing necessary attention and concern to someone. Exactly, sir. Providing necessary attention, necessary concern to someone, which ought to be holistic. Exactly. Being holistic, I mean physically, spiritually, exactly. and psychologically. Exactly. Because if you see from our introduction, members of our church, they need different types of care, varying from emotional, physical, financial, spiritual, and what exactly. have you. Mm. So when we talk about giving care, we talk about providing those necessary attention, those necessary concern for the members of the church. Exactly. Their health, their spiritual, and their psychology. Exactly. Number two, when we talk about mentoring, we mean a relationship, a relationship between an experienced one and a disciple whereby help and guide is being given to the disciple which is geared towards developing to a greater extent now it, it is a process exactly it is a process and it is a process whereby the, the disciple grows mm. and it takes an experienced one to mentor. You don't just start mentoring. When we talk about mentorship, there must be someone who is already experienced. Exactly. Who knows and who is willing to guide and help. Let me use the word a novice. Exactly. So we're establishing up. from your submissions now, sir, that for want to make good of mentorship so for you to be a good mentor to a mentee if i use that word you must have gone through that process yourself you must have an experience because you because can't give what, what you, you don't, don't have it's a relationship exactly it's not like uh, you are in the class mm. uh, you just come and give lecture and go away mm. no there must be a relationship just like a teacher learner relationship, relationship. 
the person needs to watch you. It's not something that is done once. It's a process. The person will be watching you. It's not everything you verbalize. Sometimes they look at you and they copy it. Exactly. So it is a, a relationship between two pe persons whereby help and guide is given and it is geared towards making the, 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 the novice or the younger one to grow and develop fully and properly. Thank you, sir. Something just resonated in me as you were saying this, and it, it, it kind of it shook me a little. You said it's not everything that you need to verbalize, yeah. that the person is watching you. So it becomes more critical for a leader. Because people are not just listening to what you are saying. People are also watching you in the church to see that what you are saying confirms with your everyday pattern of life. I think it's, important take it's an important takeaway for us in this discussion. Yeah. Reverend, you want to... Yes, just to add a few things, you know, way for you to actually carry out a, a true mentorship. mentorship or discipleship, there, there must be contact. Yeah. The people, you have to come down to their level. Yeah. There must be a relationship. I'm not talking about pulpit relationship or just <laughs> preaching or giving order. They need to come closer. You, the, the pastor has to be accessible. Exactly. They have to see your life. Mm. Because uh, action speaks mm. louder than mm. voice. Mm. So if there is a contact and then the people can see your life, that's the, 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 the greatest. Thank you very much, sir. You have dropped a word here. And that, for me, I'm leaving this program with that word. They have to see your life. The, you, your life doesn't have to be shrouded in secrecy. The Lord will help us. Amen. Reverend, the B part of that question says, list and discuss specific ways. I think we began to discuss the pr process already, so we can now tie it up. Care can be given to members of our churches. We will read Mark chapter 3. I invite you again to help us read Mark chapter 3, 13 to 15. And then Reverend Acts chapter 16, 1 to 5. I will read 2 Corinthians 12. We are not taking Ezekiel because, of course, that's our background text. Mark chapter 3, verse 13 to 15. Mark chapter 3, verse 13. And he goeth up into a mountain and calleth unto him whom he would. Mm. And they came unto him. And he ordained twelve that they should be with him, and that he might send them mm. forth to preach and to have power to heal sicknesses and to cast out devils. The word of God. Thanks. Well, thanks be to Acts God. Chapter 16. 1 to 5. 1 to 5. He came to Debbie and then to Lystra, where a disciple named Timothy lived whose mother was a Jewish and a believer, but whose father was a Greek. The brothers at Lystra and Econom spoke well of him. Paul wanted to take him along on the journey, so he circumcised him because of the Jews who lived in that area. For they all knew that his father was a Greek. As they traveled from town to town, they delivered the decisions reached by the apostles and elders in Jerusalem for the people to obey. So the church were strengthened in the faith and grew daily in numbers. Thank you very much, sir. Second Corinthians chapter 12, verse 17 to 18 says, Did I take advantage of you by any of those whom I sent to you? I urged Titus and sent our brother with him. Did Titus take advantage of you? Did we not walk in the same spirit? Did we not walk in the same steps? So look all these scriptures, sir. Can we list some specific ways that care can be given to members in our church? Praise God. Hallelujah. Mm. Still considering our introduction, knowing that our people have varying degrees of care, emotional, physical, financial, spiritual, legal, social. And as I summarize them holistically, physical, spiritual, and psychological. In our church today, our members need to be given care in their health. Jesus says they have been ordained to go and provide healing mm. to the sick. Exactly. We need to visit our members. It's not the duty of the pastors alone. Exactly. We have leaders in different groups. AYF has leadership. 
Madasino has leadership. Father has fellowship has leadership. Every arm of the church. It is the duty of the, of the uh, church leaders to care for the members. Make a call. Mm. You don't see anybody in the program. Ask question. Exactly. If one is sick, visit. When you visit, if the sickness, if the person is sick, you pray for the person. If he needs medical attention, the church can actually our church is trying exactly. in that aspect. The church can take care of the medical situation of the members. And again, somebody, especially the youth, may be passing through traumas. You don't leave them. When you go, to, that's, that's why we talk about relationship and mentorship. When you are close to the members, you will know their need. If it is, if it has to do with psychological or emotional, the church needs to help. Exactly. Counsel, counsel the person. Mm. It will foster relief in that person. And again, if the person is passing through spiritual uh, need, mm. the church should also profile spiritual. By so, we have given care to our members. Thank, Thank you. you. I, I love that and I want to re echo that submission that the church indeed is trying. Because I've been around some churches and I know that our vicars and our pastors sometimes have specific dates that people come in for counseling. counseling yeah. And in the course of counseling, you, you meet them at their various points of need. You can help to take care of the medical expenses or even the area that I will begin to want to see more. Mm. I don't know how feasible that would be was the introduction talks about legal. When a member is passing through some issues, if there are lawyers in the church that can even offer services, maybe for a fee or even offer it pro bono. Yeah, uh, yeah. Those are areas that the church needs to come up yeah, because I've not seen quite... Practically, it has happened in the okay. where, where, we, where we come from, that's of Abuja. Mm. Okay, there, there was a, a scenario whereby a church member was passing through a challenge. Another church member who was a leg or he's a legal practitioner uh, sacrificed. Well, yeah. He didn't collect anything. Mm. He even went further to meeting them where they were having the case. Mm. He defended this member of the church without collecting further. Awesome. So awesome. our church is trying in that aspect mm. in, in caregiving, although there are some areas we need to talk on. But in terms of legal, there are some of our members who cannot defend themselves, mm. who may not even have money to consult a lawyer. Mm. It is the duty of our legal brothers and sisters to serve God mm. in that aspect. We are members of, of our church, we are uh, members yeah. of Legal Aid Council, and these are some of the things that they need to do. Yeah. Indeed, the church is trying, but I mean, like we say, the reward for hard work is more work. work. We yeah. expect them, especially in some of these areas. It's I want also. To I want to ask something in terms of uh, mentoring mm. that uh, we saw in um, Mark chapter 3. The Bible said that Jesus called the disciples to be with him first mm. Mm. and that he might send them. So one of the ways to mentor people is being with them. Mm. Being with them in the place of prayer. Mm. Teaching them. Exactly. You know, then secondly, we saw also in Corinthians Paul was talking about Titus. Mm. And then in Acts, he was talking about uh, Timothy. Mm. He gave them opportunities. Mm. They went with him. If you are going for ministration, you can go with the younger ones. Exactly. I've done that when I was even a youth leader. Mm. Some of those people today, they were preachers, they were pastors. Mm. So giving opportunity mm. to the younger ones so that they can manifest their gifts. Exactly. It's a way of discipleship. Exactly. And then you correct them. Mm. Then another way is also to... Example, you live by example. Mm. You know, some time ago I was somewhere to minister and they gave me very fat envelope, but the, the Lord said I should not collect it. Mm. You know, and uh, I didn't collect it. They mm. tried, I said no. But one of those younger ones later came to me, said, Daddy, you challenged me. Mm. You know, how did it happen? I said, The Lord spoke told me to you that this place I'm going. You should, you, are, you, not, you should rather give them, don't collect, don't collect from them. Yeah. So when they look at your life, mm. we give them opportunity. <clears throat> so one of the greatest ways to disciple people, to mentor them, is to pray with them. Mm. And it's like in our church. If, if you do that, I'm telling you, younger ones will raise them up. I think that takes us to the next question, question 1C. And I'd like to leave that with you. How you say this lacking in some of these instances you just cited. How poorly or how well are they being done in our churches today? Well, today we cannot actually say that... We have arrived. Well, no. 
the issue of discipleship is poorly handled in our church. Mm. And um, I must confess that, thank God the awareness is coming back now, but the discipleship, we are just more interested in membership. Mm. Yeah. The groups doing that are mentorship. Mm. That are mentorship. The yeah. groups we have in the church, there is a more of just membership and mm. then the social life, help, and other things. Mm. But there is no focus on helping, strengthening them, strengthen the younger to ones. grow beyond milk to Some, the solid I'm food. You, sometimes mm. the committee members, sometimes they are focused more on other issues, mm. but not on discipleship. Mm. If sometimes the pastor may be too busy. That you will not have time because he has so many things to do. So you won't have time for younger ones. But the only should be on him to also raise a, to team, raise a team so that he's not and running around he's, and then and he's supposed things to, are suffering. In short, sure, the duty of the pastor yeah. is supposed to be to disciples the group leaders who in turn also step it down. Step it down to disciple the younger ones. Exactly. And about in our uh, our church today, thank God that uh, mm. the vision of the primates, mm. you know. He has brought a lot of vision that will help in discipleship. Exactly. There's Even a this manual, Bible there's a study, manual. Uh, there's a discipleship manual, the daily fountain, they're all geared toward for discipleship. Mm. So uh, uh, today we need to awaken because Jesus, the mandate he gave us that we should go into all the world and make disciples, and make disciples not converts. Not uh, fans. Not miracle seekers. Not miracle seekers. Disciples. Now that's why most time in our churches today, you discover that many people that are coming, they are not coming to know God. They are coming to receive something. Mm. And if you look at John chapter 6, Jesus told them, look, you are not looking for me. It was because, because I fed you yesterday. Because you of came. the word of God, we are looking for bread. Mm. Miracle seekers. Because they have not been discipled. You show why it's not happening? Because a lot of Christians today are a product of lack of discipleship, lack yes. of mentoring. Exactly. So they are giving back also what... The, 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 what they have received. Mm. And they received nothing. And in they their received sense. nothing. Thank you, sir. So it is a call for us to go back one on one. Look, look at Jesus. This mass uh, 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 preaching, or what, uh, this, uh, what do you call it, having 100,000, uh, is, that is not the way of the Bible. Jesus came, he took only 12. I don't know any man of God that is anointed like Jesus. He stayed with them, discipled them. When he released them to the world, they turned the world upside, upside down. down. So how many of us that are pastors can boast that no. there's somebody you have discipled, you have replicated your life, because discipleship is all about producing your yourself in another man. Yourself in another person. Okay, let, let me add to that. Quickly, sir. Yeah, let me add to that. The, the, the areas and the ways we are doing it well today, like many churches, we have what we call food bank. Mm. We have food bank whereby we provide uh, yes. uh, care we provide care for the need of the people, material need of the people. It's a, a good way, mm. but the way we are doing it poorly in that aspect is this. When we talk about mentorship, you are supposed to be with the people and know those who are in need of particular things. Mm. But today, when we have the food bank, we just command the sexting. To be dishing out. Yeah. Uh, so many churches do it like that. It's the duty of the sexting. In fact, some of them will be packing the things to their own house. And the, those who are supposed to benefit from that are not benefiting. Are not benefiting. I remember one of the churches I pastored. Sometimes you call them, some of them will be shy to come. But discernment, in discipleship, there must be discernment. Mm. Discipleship goes with discernment. Mm. And as a pastor, as a leader, you should be able to discern. The particular need of the of people. That person. This one may be sick. That sickness may be because of food. But if you ask the person to come to the food bank, the person may not come. But it's if you shy. discern, okay, the person will be able to benefit. So I'm trying to say that the area we are doing it poorly is we don't discern to, to know, know the right need of the people at each point in time. Thank you very much, sir. We need that psychological balance. Somebody is telling you no, but essentially is yes. He needs it, but out of shyness. You as a leader will have to go the whole way to be able to meet that need as the Spirit of the Lord helps you discern. We trust that this introductory bit has been quite a blessing to you. Stay back. We'll be back to continue the discussion. God bless you. At the King's Court, 
is a program where we worship and praise the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords through various musical renditions. So join me, Eukarya Ozovehe, at the King's Court every Tuesday by 6 p.m. on this station and it promises to be exciting and rewarding. Welcome back. Remember, we are looking at characteristics of godly leadership, giving care and mentoring. And I've been in the studio with Reverend Obum Nade and Reverend Ezike Chidozie. It's, it's a pleasure to have you. Thank you. You're welcome. Now we look at question two, sir. Explain from the key text, that's from Nehemiah and Ezekiel, where we read earlier, how leaders in our churches can become givers and mentors. Just briefly. Okay. Uh, if we look at the Nehemiah, you discover that Nehemiah was very, very sensitive to the plight of the people. So if our leaders want to, you know, carry this out, they have to be sensitive, sensitive. Mm. to the problems, to the plight of the members of the church. Mm. They have to be accessible. Thank you. Mm. They should not place themselves where people, people cannot assess, assess them. them. Or do just pretend and say, daddy, daddy, daddy. They have to be accessible. Then they have to have a way of uh, getting information Probably Nehemiah had from somebody that look, this the Levites they have not been given their own portion, mm. so you now delve into it. Mm. But that means you have to actually source for information. Source for information. Have a way. You have to be close to the people. Should not be far from them. Hmm. Uh, you know, one of our fathers in the Lord just recently challenged us, but he was speaking on that. Uh, he he is a bishop in our church, and he was speaking at that high level, and he was saying that for him is an error as a bishop not to have the statistics of yes. his membership yes of course to know how many members that his <coughs> church course. he was yes. speaking yes. recently so for me for us as a pastor you mm. know that information you just talked about having access to information it's important that we know even disaggregating them yes. by these are women these are these these are people who employ these are people not employed because you wouldn't know a church member may have it in his mind to help someone but if you don't have information on their state you may not be able to provide that as a let pastor. me add from the key test also you see is it talking about shepherding if our leaders must be caregivers we must put ourselves in the shoes of being a shepherd exactly when you're a shepherd you know a shepherd knows every sheep mm. and if you're a shepherd you must have discernment of spirit exactly what be feel the holy spirit i don't think any sheep goes to the shepherd and say i am I'm sick. sick the shepherd knows the what one that each is sheep knows. Exactly. so our leaders must be true shepherds exactly and then the leaders they must know how to ask questions mm. you understand mm. because when you ask questions things will come out <laughs> Thank you very so, much. You know, somebody says some answers we have not received in life because we have not asked questions. questions yeah. It's important that as a leader we ask some questions that will provoke some answers that will help us move forward. Reverend, question three. What are some of the benefits and challenges of being givers of care and mentors as leaders in the church? Let's look at Judges chapter 2, verse 7 to 11 for some consequences of the failure to mentor others. That's we expect you to speak in ex tempo, in, uh, that's looking at benefits and challenges. And then we read Judges chapter 2 to look at the consequences of. Yes. And okay. So, what are some of the benefits? Some, and of, the the challenges? Benefits, some of the benefits of uh, giving care and mentorship as leaders. Number one, there is growth. Exactly. When you give, when you give uh, mentorship, and care the disciples grow mm. and there is replication exactly you replicate yourself mm. in the person you are mentoring mm. and as you replicate yourself there is growth mm. and there is uh, 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 what i call or uh, keeping faith keeping faith the faith will be sustained mm. but when you don't give care there will be death i'm mm. talking about uh, the the challenges the challenge, yeah but when we give care there will be growth when we give mentorship we replicate ourselves we hand over what we have received as we will see we will come to this point during our memory verse mm. because when there's no leadership when there's no mentorship 
there will be a gap. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. It's, can I ask something that uh, it also brings joy and fulfillment yes. for the mentor, mm. for the person mentoring the... Of course. And so it, it brings fulfillment because mm. that's why you are there. Mm. And it also helps in the work because if there are a lot of people that can handle something, you delegate duties. Of course, yeah. So it becomes easier for... The stress is less. The stress is less. Yeah, yeah. You know, when you come to a church and you are just everywhere, yeah. jack of all trade, I don't think that church yeah, is doing something it. came to me just now from Asura Post chapter 2. You see, there's four star of fellowship and mm. unity. Mm. The Bible says that the Sabbath day we are together. Yes. Shine things in common. Yeah. Okay, and there, there, there was this unity and mm, bonding. Yeah, the key that they gave. Bonding, mm, yeah, bonding, exactly. and the church was growing. So when we care for one another, I can't be visiting you often without love being yeah. increasing yeah. in us. Yeah, our church, we, we we talk too much that we don't care this and that, and it was you see that many of us are leaving because I was sick. Nobody visited me. I didn't come to the nobody asked of me. Yeah. But when we give care, unity, bonding, togetherness. Is first time. Yeah. Judgment. Thank you very much. Sir. But maybe my take on a personal note. You know, I've seen people who come, nobody visited me. I'm leaving that church. Mm. Yeah. We should also disciple pers people to the extent that they grow. That even when physically, as much as we encourage people don't visit you, you will understand that you are not alone. That God is ever present. Yes, sir. With you. Yes, even even at that. Mm. Are, even we don't. I'm not. I'm that. not negating yes. that because we have a lot me. of people that are waiting and to be, if nobody is coming, I'm leaving the church. Yes. Jesus told his disciples, mm. "The time is coming mm. when all of you will be scattered, mm. each to his." But he said something in John, mm. I think 17, 32, or that John 16, 32. You see. I am not alone. The Father is with me. Yeah. When a Christian grows beyond milk yeah. and knows that the Father, the assurance of his presence is ever with him, even when men seemingly, as much as we don't encourage them, are not there, you will understand that God is with you and you move on. And that is what discipleship does. Discipleship grows a man beyond milk yeah. to solid food, food, where you know that if God is with me, no man can be against me. I'm not making an excuse for us not visiting. It's important that we visit. We should have self-fellowship, church groups to grow the faith. But God is looking for a church that is matured. God is looking for a church that can move on. Yeah. Look at that lady, sorry. Look at that lady, Sharibu. You remember the, yeah. uh, the, story, the testimony of that girl? Yeah. You yeah, know, that, I look at her as a young girl who is disciples. Who was able to say, ah, in the bush where I am, my father is not with me, just like Daniel and the three blue guys in Babylon. But they were able to sustain that faith. That's, there are some people who say, ah, it's all. It's all down and dusted. Let me give in. I pray that in the Lord indeed will help us. Do Sir, we, let's read Judges chapter 2. Do we look at challenges? Mm? We said advantages and disadvantages and challenges. What are the challenges? Okay, maybe you want to add one yes, of you. Yes, because you cannot actually mentor somebody who is not ready. Mm. So in our church, sometimes you see people who have been in the church for 50 years. And, and they're they not ready they to babes. submit. They are babes in the Lord. And they're not ready. Mm. So it's a big challenge. Mm. They are that, like the people that Jesus met in John chapter 6 who are <laughs> only looking for so signs. Science. But Jesus said, labor not for the food that perish. So, sorry, sir. He brought a very big, big, uh, big point there. Yeah. Our church has a problem of mentorship yes. in that... Our people are not willing and ready to mentor. I'm telling you. Look at our Bible study. How many, people, how many of us attend Bible study? Yeah. Look at our midweek uh, follow-up classes. How many of us come? You but know, sorry, I was challenged by a fellow Anglican when we were in school that is now in living faith. You see how they are rushing and, in fact, every time they are there. But our people are not willing to come. But the question I'm asking is this. What should we do to make them willing to come? Everybody has so this. So it, it also tells the level of our spirituality of our members. So we have a work to do. Another challenge is I am seeing here uh, is the issue of fake brethren. When you, it, it talks about giving care, okay. you know, some people actually will come they and pretend, pretend yeah. to they need that care. That's where discernment comes in, sir. So okay, it's, yes, we're I talking get about it. And they come to church and they pretend, and they pretend that they, but really, they yeah. need care. I understand. Mm. And actually what they are looking for is mm -hmm. that if you I've seen them, people that after church they are begging this person for money. Several encounter them. Mm. So my wife went to a, a saloon. Just quickly, sir. They so went to the saloon to do her hair and uh, they were discussing. And one of the ladies was telling the the girl said, Look, in short, I this other church they give this. If you're first time they give this. <laughs> this is what they were mentioning several churches. 
So they go from churches to churches looking for first time as the pack of rice that they will give. Even if you give them the church, they will collect here and go to another place. Because they are not disciples. Let's read Judges chapter 2, sir, verse 7 to 11, and look at the consequences of failing to mentor or to disciple people. Judges chapter 2, verse 7. And the people served the Lord all the days of Joshua and all the days of the elders that outlived Joshua, who had seen all the great works of the Lord mm. that he did for Israel. And Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died, being 110 years old. Mm. And they buried him in the border of his inheritance in mm. Timnath, Paris, mm. in the Mount of Ephraim on the north side of the hill Gash. And also all that generation we are gathered unto their fathers, and there arose another generation after them which knew not the Lord, nor yet the works which he had done for Israel. Verse 11. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and served Berlin. This is the word of God. Thanks be yeah. to God. So that verse 11 is instructive. They yeah. did evil in the sight of the Lord. Yeah. Why? Because a new generation arose yes. and they were not mentored. Yes. You know, I pray we will not come to that point. You see, the, the priest, the pastor I'm serving under, in a service and people are, we are glued to the, what is it called? Screen. The projector. Project, yeah. And somehow this interruption, nepa. And we discovered that some people didn't come to church with their hymn book and they were struggling uh, with, you, with the book of common prayer to respond. There will be silence in it. There will be silence, you see. The Lord be with you. Everybody can say that easily. Yeah. Oh Lord, show your mercy upon us. People could not respond because the project. So it, I pray we don't come to that point where we don't mentor people that can defend our can. digital mentorship. <laughs> okay. The Lord indeed will help us, but it's important we do that. Question four, sir. Discuss possible steps that can be taken by the church to remedy poor giving of care and mentoring. Sir, can you help us with Revelation chapter 2, verse 5, and then Ezekiel 34, 1 to 6. That is rather long. We we'll try to do. Revelation 2, 5. Are you there? Yes, Revelation 2, verse 5. Remember the height from which you are fallen. Repent and do the things you did at first. If you do not repent, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from his place. Thank this you. is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Ezekiel 34, let me read from verse 7. We've taken it from 1 to 6. Yeah. Let me read from verse 7 down. Therefore, you shepherd, hear the word of the Lord. As I live, says the Lord, surely because my flock became a prey and my flock became food for every breeze of the field. Because there was no shepherd, nor did my shepherd search for my flock. But the shepherd fed themselves and did not feed my flock. Therefore, O shepherd, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against the shepherd, and I will require my flock at their hands. I will cause them to cease feeding the sheep, and the shepherd shall feed themselves no more. For I will deliver my flock from their mouth, and they may no longer be food for them. Verse 11. For thus says the Lord, Indeed, I, will, I myself will search for my sheep and seek them out. Mm. As a shepherd seek out his flock on the day he is among his scattered sheep, so I will seek my sheep and deliver them from all the places mm. where they were scattered on a cloudy and dark day. And I will bring them out from the people and gather them from the country I will bring them to their own land. I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, in the valleys and in all the inhabited places of the country. I will feed them in good pasture, and their food shall be on the high mountains of Israel. I will feed my flock, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. Verse 16. I will seek out what was lost, and bring back what was driven away. Bind up the broken, and strengthen what was sick. But I will destroy the fat and strong, and feed them in judgment. So, looking at these scriptures now, what are some of the possible steps that can be taken by the church to remedy poor giving of care and mentoring? Quickly, sir. Well, if looking at uh, Revelation chapter 2, verse 5, the Lord is asking us to go back, to go back to the yeah, basis. Exactly. Maybe the church has to go back the time of catechism. Mm. Yes, sir. We will have to go back. Those days when we had mm. confirmation, for a whole nine, ten months, you have mm. been discipled. Exactly. But today... We rush things. We rush it. Digital age. Digital age. 
<laughs> you know, somebody will bring his child and say, please, just let him just enroll. Write his name to so confirm. So even on the eve of the Do you confirmation, know that the Episcopal In those visits. days, there's service every morning in Anglican church. If you go to some villages, they still have service mm, yeah. uh, in the morning. Uh, I because remember growing up. We call it Okoto to you. Okoto. Okoto. So Okoto. You, you have time to talk to the people. So the church has to go back. Thank, I like what the introduction of the Bible study in our service. Mm. It's one of the ways for discipleship. Mm. I don't play with it in my own church. Mm. Unfortunately, some people will not even come to church. They Until will, after, after, after the Bible, the Bible study. study. Yeah. You know, you talk and talk. I say, why are you coming to church? Some of these people call them 7 o'clock on Monday. They're already on their way to the, to the, to office. the office. Well, they can't come to church by 9 o'clock, by 10 o'clock. So the church has to go back. To the basics. To Very emphasis important. on Bible study and discipleship. There is no support if, I, if, I if you leader, want to grow. If you're in church you committee, commit to prayer and you have study. to be in the Bible study. Mm. You must make out time. Exactly. In short, if you are, you are working in the bank, you don't have time. We can create one in the night by 8 to 10. Come there because... If somebody is not taking spiritual food, he will the be person will die spiritually. Exactly. And they say the church is there. Thank you very much, sir. I have an addition, please. Uh, the, the church should take this the step of growing to me mentorship rather than membership. Mm. Our problem now is every church is seeking for membership mm. rather than mentorship. Mm -hmm. And if your mindset is on membership, you will lose mentorship to grow but the numbers yes. without growing the individuals yeah. the men now, if if we if we change our relationship look at that verse seven it says therefore sorry verse uh, seven says therefore ye shepherds hear the word of the lord mm. i feel the church should go back to the word of god mm. let us hear the word of the lord let us get the mind of god in a time like what is god saying in time like this? it's unfortunate that many churches don't talk about rapture again if you have the mindset that rapture is closer than when we believed, it will make us go back to mentorship rather than membership. Mm. And if we have the mindset, we will grow beyond poor giving of care and poor mentorship to reach giving of care. Knowing that you are preparing this soul for eternity. For eternity. You are giving care and mentorship for this soul for eternity. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. You know, you see, I, for me, it's an error. For a sinner to be in church six months, one year, and the person is comfortable. We are dishing out prosperity message and we are not addressing the fundamental question of sin in that person's life. He, the Reverend just said people no longer preach about rapture. Even holiness, yeah. the issue of repentance, how often do they come up in our churches? God will help us indeed. On that visiting, you know, I was making a case that people should also come to a point where they will be able to stand strong by themselves. And I remember that scripture is in John chapter 16, verse 32. Jesus said, the time will come when all of you will be scattered. Each of you will leave me. But he said, I'm not alone. The Father is with me. We need to come to that point where we know that God's presence is ever with us. Conclusion. Giving care and mentorship are essential part of godly leadership. This study encourages us to follow Christ's mentoring pattern of combining giving care with service. You know, Jesus combined giving care yeah. with service. He spoke to them. He also gave them food so that they wouldn't go home on their way and fall by the way. There, there, there's an essential ingredient in these two uh, uh, issues we are considering. Mm. And that's the love of God. And then, the Bible said the love of God compels us. Compels us. Thank you, if a pastor does not have this love of God, if a pastor does not have a genuine call to come and serve, there is no way he can give this care and discipleship. Exactly. Thank so you. Good the, the, the Spirit of God is actually working together. <laughs> what he said came to my mind, but in this way. Yeah. I was trying to ask a question. What makes a leadership godly? We will talk about caregiving mm. and mentorship. Mm. What makes a leadership godly? Simply God factor. Mm. God's factor. You know, what we are doing to, you know, so, sorry, some of us are civil servants. We are using our leadership mentality in yeah, public service, service to the church. Sorry. sorry. But today, we should grow beyond that. Exactly. We are talking about godly leadership. So there must be God factor. And you mentioned it, the love, love of, of God. God. And then compassion. That is exactly. it. If we God. have this, the attributes of God in our leadership, it will compel us to do mentorship. Thank you. Christ's love compels us. Food for thought. 
The self-serving leadership of today is a direct consequence of mentoring failure. Mm. Let's look at our memory verse, Judges uh, chapter 2. Judges chapter 2 verse, verse 10. Judges chapter 2 verse 10. 10. Let's read it together. When, when all, all that, that generation, generation had been, been gathered, gathered to their, their fathers, fathers Another generation arose after them who did not know the Lord, nor the work which he had done for Israel. I pray that in our lifetime, we will always have a generation, a remnant that will always stand for God, Amen. that there will be no gap in between. We trust indeed that today has been a blessing and that you, your family, your loved one, everybody that was part of this Bible study program today has been blessed. Sustain that. Keep on growing. We are grateful to our resource persons today. Reverend Obum Nade, it's always a pleasure to have you, sir. Thank you. We pray that you oblige us when next we call you. And then, yes. Reverend Chidozi Ezike, thank you. And Th we pray that the Lord will sustain you now and always. Amen. Thank you. Viewers, you can give us feedback on how today was a blessing to you. We trust that indeed the undiluted word of God has come your way. What you do with it is what will take you to the next level. Give us feedback. The channels, the handles, the social media platforms are right now scrolling on your screen. Let us know how this program is reaching out to you. And if the Lord is laying it in your heart to partner with us, so that this commitment that we have to take the undiluted word of God to the utmost ends of the earth will be realized in our lifetime. If the Lord is laying that in your heart, you can also get across to us. It will be most exciting for us to hear from you. Until next time when I will see you, please don't relent in giving care. Let brotherly love continue. God bless you. Thank you.